Welcome to Native Studies. Tonight I want to talk about the assimilation policies of the Canadian government as they were first applied in the uh, late 19th century and early 20th centuries. Hayter Reed was, was uh, influenced by social Darwinism. Social Darwinism in the late 19th century was uh, a, a racist formula. You guys all heard of Darwin, right? And it's the evolution of the species. Well, the social Darwinists took Darwin's idea of the competition between species and applied it to societies. And not surprisingly, the, the top society would be the white uh, European society, and the bottom societies would be uh, the First Nations societies. And other people sort of fell in between, depending on which racist was uh, uh, speaking at the moment or writing at the moment. Well, a very warm welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, History 152.3, History of Our Country from uh, uh, Confederation. So we're coming to you, as we usually do, from uh, Studio 8 here in uh, the basement of the College of Education at the University of Saskatchewan. And uh, we're going <coughs> through the wonders of modern uh, technology, live television to various sites across the, uh, across the province. Bienvenue, welcome, Pense, a uh, very good afternoon, everybody. All right, let's talk about a number of other major changes that are happening in, uh, in Canada uh, from an economic perspective. Okay, so politically speaking, this early period is a period of liberal domination. The liberals completely and totally dominate. Well, let's switch gears and look at economics. Um, this graph here, you don't have to copy this down, but just to give you a, a quick look at, uh, at, at the theme here, all right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Uh, so we have uh, our various forms of communications up and going. Uh, chat feature is uh, is open. Uh, we also have our old school phone lines available also. If anybody that wants to use that ancient uh, technology, <laughs> uh, Jason here is here to regale you with uh, anything you need to know about Diefenbaker. And uh, Tommy Douglas, I'll take responsible for saying comments there. <laughs> so phone uh, 96 7037, ladies and gentlemen or uh, chat, chat feature also. Uh, hoping most of you will have had your, uh, your midterms back by, by now. Uh, strongly encourage you folks, uh, take a look at the, at the comments. Um, Sally uh, writes in, and then she, she, she tried to get out of it. She said, is the CCF still involved in Canada? And then she says, never mind, I got my answer from one of my classmates here in the Ronge. Um, that may be the case, really, but it's still a really interesting question. And, and no, this, so the CCF isn't involved anymore, sort of, but I'll turn it over to, uh, to Mike to, uh, to flush it out perhaps a little yeah. bit. Uh, CCF uh, renamed itself in 1960, I believe, or 61, an appeal to kind of, or an attempt to broaden its appeal. Um, renamed itself the New Democratic Party. So if you have 